back again guys with another horror movie review and today october 11th it's going to be blind beast it's another asian horror movie and i have quite a few of those so <laughs> expect maybe a couple more of those in this 31 days of horror but i've been wanting to see this movie for a while i've had it again i don't really know how i came across it just reading reviews for suggestions for different horror movies and I know it kind of had some surreal aspects to it, and I know that it's pretty disturbing and stuff, but it's a, like a classic. It's an old movie. I think it was made in like 1969 or something. Um, but anyway, I made, took some notes again, and I have like a page and a half of notes on this one. So i uh, got kind of a problem with just writing down like what's going on in the plot to remember, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's a Japanese movie, and I'll look at the kit back of the case to see what that says too, but um, I know, I think it takes place in Tokyo, so I did catch that. Um, so it's a foreign movie, and there's English subtitles, um, and I think, you know, a lot of people don't like subtitles, they don't like foreign movies, but I think one of the things that I appreciate about them is that you have to, like, pay more attention while you're watching it, so... I think you kind of get more into the movie because if you're watching a movie that has English language or whatever, I can feel like, well, I can just get up, go to the other room and do whatever and kind of get away from it for a while because I can hear the TV and I can just hear what's going on so I can just go do whatever. But, uh, or not even just pay attention while you're watching on, on the screen. You could just be sitting on the couch kind of going through your phone or something while it's playing in the background, but... Like, in a foreign movie, like, if you're not paying attention, reading the subtitles, like, you're going to be lost, and you don't know what's going on. So I appreciate that. Um, the opening music, I thought it kind of reminded me of, like, the Zelda theme song, or, like, Golden Axe, or it kind of sounded like Zelda being played on the Genesis. I don't know why, but it didn't sound horrifying. It was kind of an interesting song, but um, it sounded uh, it sounded good. I don't so there's an opening song, and we have some nudity um, shots in the opening, because basically, I'll just t tell you the basic plot of this movie, is that a guy who is a blind sculptor, with the help of his mother, captures a beautiful model, and they abduct her, take her to this warehouse where he's been making sculptures, and he wants to make a sculpture of her. So basically, it's an abduction story. And there's the blind sculptor that wants to sculpture her. So in the opening of this movie, we get uh, kind of like nude photos of her that show her chest. And they're like black and white photos. But you get that kind of at the beginning. Um, her name is Akishima. And the movie is in color. After those black and white photos, it does go to color. I think that the movie looks great. I mean, it looks modern and stuff. It didn't really look too dated or anything. Um... And we have some narrating from Aki. Um, so we have kind of narration from her from the beginning and at the end. Um, so I noticed that. And, you know, basically there's like an art fair or an art gallery that has a statue of her that somebody made, a sculpture. And this blind guy is there, like, fondling it. He's, like, running his hands all over it, feeling it. He's, like, feeling her breasts and stuff. And she's kind of around the corner, like, watching him do this. And she's feeling kind of violated, like she feels like he's touching her body. Well, later on, um, she's in a room, and she feels like she needs a massage or something. So she calls, like, a massage company to send somebody. And it ends up being that guy, but she doesn't know it. And he's wearing, like, sunglasses. And um, he's like, you know, sorry, your regular guy didn't show up. Um, but I'm here, and, you know, I'm experienced in massage, and I'm even blind. He had, like, a stick with him so you could know that he was blind. And, you know, maybe she didn't notice that the guy was blind that was fondling her sculpture at the beginning. Because, I mean, she didn't really know that guy, I guess. Um, but, you know, as viewers, we know, like, exactly who it is, pretty much. Uh, um, anyway, I don't know. I guess 
Maybe we don't know that guy's blind either. Maybe I just know because I've read reviews and stuff and kind of know what the movie's about anyway. Anyway, whatever. Um, basically, though, he's massaging her, and she's like, I want you to massage harder. And he's feeling her all over, and he starts feeling her breasts. And she's like, you know, she gets mad then. She's like, I want you to stop. Like, I want you out of here. I don't want this. And he's just saying, you know, how he's blind, and he enjoys touching or whatever. And Anyways, um, he ends up putting a cloth on her face with, um, you know, whatever the chemical chloroform or whatever that knocks people out. He knocks her out with his cloth, and then his mother ends up coming and helping him, him get all of her clothes and get her out of that building. So the next thing we know, they take her to the shack and put her in, it's like a warehouse, and there's kind of like an entry room where they cook and stuff like that, and then there's a door, and then that's like the, the sculpture warehouse part or whatever. Um, I noticed early on that there's no frightening music. There is a little bit later, but I was kind of wondering if there was going to be music during the movie, like for the suspense. Like there was no, I don't think there was any like suspenseful music, like when he first like knocks her out or anything. So she's abducted. Um, basically she wakes up in that room with the sculptures. It's all dark and he has a flashlight and he's shining it on her. And this movie was hard to find a trailer for. Uh, there's one on the DVD, but to get it to loop on my computer, I just found like a static shot. So you see the blind sculptor, and this is when he's sculpting her body, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but he's he's working on a sculpture, and then he has her behind her, and she's laying on this giant sculpture. But anyways, she's in a dark room, and he's shining a flashlight on her, and behind her we see these walls, and you can barely see it in that picture. You can see ears in the background so there's these like black walls or dark walls that have like different body parts sticking out there's like different sections and it's kind of like a i don't know if it's a circular room but the the entire circumference of the room has different sections with different body parts and he's talking to her with this flashlight explaining how he's blind and stuff and she's freaked out and, you know, she's kind of scurrying along the walls, and so we see, like, another section of wall, and we see another section of wall, and she's kind of, like, trying to get away from him. And so he talks about how he's blind from birth. He was born blind. He hates his parents because of that. And um, let's see here. So... The first, you know, thing on the wall that we see is a wall of eyes, like sculptured. Um, there's a wall of noses, a wall of mouths, um, ones with legs sticking out of the wall, ones with arms sticking out of the wall, and ones with boobs sticking out of the wall. Those are the ones that I've seen. Um, but he says touch is the only sense that matters to him. He talks about how the sense of um, sound is like the wind and and smell is not very great, like an animal sense or whatever, I don't know. Talks about taste, how, you know, it's not that great either. And he says that touch is really the important sense that he has. Um, so he says that all these sculptured body parts are like from women that he knew. He tells a story about how he got an inheritance from his father that died or something like that. And he was rich. And it took him six years to build, like, this sculpture warehouse, I think. Um, now, some of the music that does play during the scene while, after a while, I, while he's explaining this stuff to her, and we're seeing all this, I, I wrote that there was, like, peaceful elevator music. <laughs> so it wasn't really frightening. It was kind of, like, a little bit uplift, uplifting. Um, it crawls, uh, and then she crawls while he's, like, following her, talking to her, and she's kind of trying to get away from him. She ends up crawling on this giant statue of a woman, a woman's body. And so there's two of them side by side in this room. There's one, like, on its back, and there's one on its chest. And, you know, there's giant boobs. And But, you know, she has to crawl, like, up the leg part of it. Like, it's they're pretty giant statues. Um... So it's a room that's surrounded by different body parts, and then in the middle there's like two giant 
bodies, basically. That are, I think they're headless, but there's the arms and the legs and everything. Um, and yeah, it's still dark, and then we see those two body statues when he finally turns on the light. He's like, here, I'll turn on the light. Um, let's see. She, he wants her to be his model. He says, you know, he's going to make a new piece of art that's built on touch and everything, and it's going to be, like, some new invention, and it's going to take the art world by storm, and it's going to be made by a blind person for blind people, and she has, like, the best body and everything. Uh, and, and she basically says no. She's not going to agree to it. She's like, no, let me out. Like, you're crazy. I want out of here. I'm not going to do it. And um, he's like, well, that's fine. I'll just keep you here until you agree to do it. And, uh, you know, he says that he'll pay her and everything. So he kind of, at first, seems kind of like kind of nice and stuff. And she's like, you know, why did you, why did you capture me to have me do this? And he's like, you wouldn't have done it any other way. You wouldn't have agreed to it. And so anyway, she's like, no, I won't. And he's like, I'm not going to let you out then. And then she's like then the police will come find me eventually. And he's like, no, the police won't find you. He's like, I gave a false name for that massage job. And we used, like, different taxis. And we walked a ways, like, to get here. And, like, everything <laughs> everything was, like, well planned out and stuff. And there's, like, not a trace of, like, where you are, or who we are, or anything. So that's kind of, like, when the horror music a little bit starts to kick in when she finally finds out that now she's kind of in deeper, she's kind of screwed because this is, like, serious. And, uh, I put, like, the music, it's kind of, like, timpani and, like, strings, kind of, like, orchestra. It's, like, dun dun dun. I don't know. But, and then the intro song plays, the one that I said sounded kind of like Zelda, so. Uh, but, let's see here. I can't even read my own writing because I was just scribbling this stuff. Uh, she doesn't. She fakes being in pain. Uh, they basically, he basically has to knock her out again with the chloroform because she gets so hysterical that she wants out of there. And we start seeing scenes where, like, she starts kind of going along with him. Thinking, thinking of different ways to escape, basically, like how she can manipulate him. And, you know, she says that she's sick at one time. She's like, you know, finally, like, the next day or whatever, she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll agree to doing the uh, sculpture. Like, she's like, I thought about it overnight, and I was scared, and finally came to my senses, and I realized, like, what you're doing is a good work, and I want to be a part of it, blah, blah, blah. But, like, while they're doing it, um, well, they try to feed her, um, like, a nice on a table, they bring her, like, a nice breakfast plate, you know, like, that looks really great with all these drinks and food and everything, and bread and eggs and all that stuff, and she doesn't eat any of it. She she refuses. And so the blind man, obviously, he can't see, and he comes in, and he's like, did you enjoy your breakfast? And the mother's, like, taking out the plate that hasn't been touched. She's like, she didn't touch anything on it. So his mother's really his helper that can see everything, and, um, anyway, she comes up with these different ideas. Like I said, she says that, you know, she has an A and that her stomach hurts and she wants, like, aspirin or whatever. And she wants him to go to the store and get aspirin. And so he, he does. Uh, she tries to escape, basically, and the mom fights her and uh, gets her back. And then uh, she ends up saying, like, Later on, that she's hungry, and she wants to dine with him, and um, she wants, like, alcohol. He's like, I've never had alcohol before, and, and then he's like, wait a minute, like, you're trying to get me drunk so you can escape or whatever, and she's like, no, like, I really want to enjoy a meal with you. You've never had a meal with a woman and stuff. Like, you need to experience this. Like, you've only been with your mother, like, your whole life, basically. And So they drink and eat together. Um... Basically, she tells, 
she starts seducing him, tells him that she loves him and everything, and she kisses him, and the mother comes in, and the mother's like, she's just trying to fool you, like, you're too stupid to see this. She's like, I'm your mother, like, I know these things, I know what women are like, like, she's not into you, and, and all this stuff. And uh, then Aki's like, your mother's just jealous because, like, I'm taking you away from her, etc. So we see some of the struggle between, like, the son and the mother, and, well, later on that night, the mother goes and grabs some clothes, and while her son's asleep, she goes to Aki, and she's like, I want you to get out of here, like, I want you to escape, whatever. She's like, here's some, there's money in here for you to go to the taxi and everything. And so at first, you kind of wonder if it's a trap. Is she just seeing if she'll agree with it, just so she can tell her son, like, look, I told you. Uh, what's she trying to do? Is she really trying to help her? Does she just hate her, and she wants her out of there? Um, but anyway, she tries to get her out of there, and they get into that first opening room, and before they get to the door, basically, the son's, like, standing in front of the door, <laughs> and it's, like, it started to snow outside, he's like, mother, like, where are you, where are you going, and she's like, it's, uh, I don't know, she said that it's too hot in here, like, I wanted to go outside, snow or I needed to go outside to get wood or something I don't know but basically he's like well why aren't you going alone like he knows that the girl's with her like even though he's blind like he he can sense all this stuff like he knows what's going on and um he's like you know you're trying to get rid of her so this starts a fight and there's some different struggles And, uh, he's like, you know, she's basically like, see, I told you, like, she doesn't love you and stuff, she just wants to get out of here. And, uh, then Aki's like, no, it's not true, I do love him, and all this stuff, and, and, uh, she's like, the mother's like, you're a slut, because you take, like, nude photos and stuff of yourself or whatever, and she's like, I'm not like that, like, I'm a virgin, and you know, that's just my career, or whatever. Uh, anyway. What happens is the mother ends up trying to kill Aki, strangling her. She has it on the ground, and she's just strangling her for a while, like, and, uh, he's kind of freaking out, and, uh, he ends up pulling his mother off of her and throwing her back, and she ends up hitting her head on the wall or whatever and dies, basically. Uh, you know, he gets up, Aki, you know, makes sure she's okay. Like, she runs over to the mother and she's like, yeah, she's she's dead. Like, it was a freak accident. Like, she hit her head on the wall. Then he freaks out and, you know, starts chasing after Aki, basically. Aki hits him in the head with a shovel, like, really hard. <laughs> and he's, like, bleeding down his head. I'm like, wow. That was intense, so anyway, basically, he ends up grabbing her and taking her back in the room. Um, and, you know, she's struggling with him, and he basically says, like, you know, you think that I'm not a man, you think that I'm a mama's boy and all this, and uh, he's like, I'm going to show you that I am a man, he's like, I'm going to take your virginity, and basically, you know, he wants to rape her. Then it basically says that we skip to several days later, and she is now has some kind of Stockholm Syndrome or something where she's actually kind of falling in love with them because they've been doing nothing but making love for the past few days. And I don't know if it's all been in the dark or not, because I kind of get the sense that she's been in the dark the whole time or something, so she's kind of experiencing what it's like to be blind, and she's like becoming accustomed to it. And they kind of talk about how being blind's like, how using, you know, only like the sense of touch is kind of like what insects do and stuff. Um, this is kind of where the movie took a turn for me, because I think up to that point it was like a really great abduction story and stuff, and it was really intense, and it really, there was just a lot of good dialogue and, and different circumstances between, you know, the victim that was captured and between him and between him and his mother and between the victim and the mother and all that stuff. That was really good. 
and I think the whole movie is good. I mean, I'll say that, but I do think that it kind of took a turn here. It didn't take like a nosedive, but it went kind of off in a different direction that I didn't expect. Because you think, you know, a lot of times in an abduction story or something like this, that, you know, the end result should be like the person gets away. Not that the person like falls in love with them, <laughs> but what ends up happening is, you know, she's, she says that she starts finding him attractive and stuff and they're just touching each other more and more, but they want like more pleasure. They want more sensation. So they start seeking like pain for pleasure and she wants him to bite her like really hard, like to draw blood. And then after he does, like, she's like, I want you to, uh, he's like, I want you to, bl to bite me. Um, and they end up going from biting and stuff to using whips and ropes, and they're, like, brutalizing each other. And uh, eventually they go to sharp objects and knives, and they're cutting each other. And they're drinking each other's blood, like, from their bodies. <laughs> so it just goes to more extreme and more extreme, and they're just seeking more, more pain. And I was thinking at this time, I was like, what about, like, that movie Fifty Shades of Grey? I've never seen it, I've never read the book, but I know it was really popular. I know it was about kind of like sexual torture or something like that. I don't know, but, you know, it's really popular. But I never really cared to see it. But I was thinking, that movie probably doesn't got nothing on this. <laughs> so, it's like, okay. Um, and it's not really gory and stuff. I'm not saying that. Like, it's not really at all. I mean, there's a little bit of blood. It's just the idea of these things, I guess. Um, they buried the mother, too, like, in that front room, like, under the floor, and it talks about, like, how her body started to stink after a while. Um, basically, though, as they take it more and more and more extreme, and they're becoming weak and stuff because they're so beaten and out of blood, and she's like, I've, I found out, like, you know, how I want to die, like, um, I want you to cut off my arms and my legs. She's like, that would be, like, the ultimate sensation, like, to die, like, losing my sense of touch, like. <laughs> so somehow, like, having her arms and legs cut off is, like, the ultimate death, I guess. It's the ultimate ecstasy to her at this point. And, uh, you know, he's like, wouldn't you rather just die slowly or something? And she's like, no, this is what I want. So he goes to the other room, he grabs a hammer and, like, a chef knife. And then he gets up to her, basically, and she's like, okay, do it. And, like, he, he just hits it once, basically, which is, you know, not realistic. But And, like, as he hits it and supposedly cuts her arm off, like, the arm off the statue that he's been making of her breaks off, which I guess I kind of didn't mention except for that it's in the picture. But, yeah, he's always he's working on a sculpture of her throughout this. And so that sculpture at the end, like, as he cuts off the arms, the arms fall off of it, and the legs fall off of it. And basically she's dead, and then he takes the chef knife, and he, like, puts it up to his chest, and then he falls down, and, like, lets it go through his chest. So that's how it ends, and they both die. Long. Um, it wasn't really a long movie, but it's just a long explanation for me. I guess, going through the entire plot. I guess, I think there's a lot to probably analyze there as far as our different senses and being born blind. And like I said, the relationship between the mother and the son and the Stockholm Syndrome. And, you know, the mother's like, I raised you um, as a blind boy. Um, you know, you need to realize, like, nobody loves you like I do. Like, she doesn't love you. She's lying to you. Like, I've, I've done everything that you've wanted me to do. You know, she ha helped her, helped him abduct her and all this stuff. And, uh, but he's kind of fallen for the girl. And, and, you know, and she's like, you know, I raised you blind and, and taught you everything that you know. And he's like, yeah, but you, you're you the one that gave birth to me. Like, you gave birth to me as a blind baby. Like, blames her for that. So it's like, in the end, it's kind of like, what is this? Like, a weird love story or something? <laughs> I think it is a horror movie, definitely. Um, because it involves, basically, like I said, an abduction. And it is uh, disturbing. 
and being isolated, like in that creepy room. And I mean, that's really the one main features about this movie is that room that she's in with all the sculptures and stuff. I've never really seen anything like that, I don't think, in any other movie. It makes me think of a video game called Agony that's like supposed to take place in hell, and there's like walls made of like flesh with like babies or whatever. And uh, it kind of makes me think of that, like body parts and walls. But off the top of my, my head, and I'm sure there are other things, but, you know, I can't really think of anything that really compares to that. And that's the surreal part. That's, you know, surreal imagery with the statues. But, I don't know. Let's look at the case. It's interesting that this scene doesn't really happen in the movie because when he's wearing the glasses, sunglasses is when he shows up as the massage guy at the beginning, so he doesn't actually wear that like while they're doing anything else. I also don't know if he really uses a blade like that, but that's them. And so there's only three characters in this movie, so like I said, there is a lot of dialogue. Um, it's amazing for that. Let me read the back of it. It says, a blind sculptor kidnaps an artist's model and imprisons her in his warehouse studio, a shadow land of perverse monuments to the female form. Here, a deranged passion play of sensual and sexual obsession is acted out in a world where sight is replaced by touch. Japanese new wave master Yasuzo Masumura, Masumura is beautiful and terrifying tale of erotic horror from a short story by Edogawa Ram Rampo is one of the most dazzling, dazzlingly stylistic tours de force in the history of cinema. Fantima is very proud to present Blind Beast uncut and in its original what? Dioscope aspect ratio for the first time in the U.S. I'm definitely uh, pleased to own this movie and I do think it was good. There's a little bit more in here about it. Some of these pictures where you don't really see much. You see kind of her with the, the eyes in the background. See the wall of ears. And uh, see her. <laughs> that looks like um looks like he's whipping her there. Like she's bound, so that's like when they're both enjoying the pain pleasure stuff. See a wall of legs. And that's a giant boob there, I guess. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It was good. It's not what I expected. I kind of waited for a while to watch this because I knew it was like an older film. I kind of knew what the idea of it was. I thought maybe it was going to be kind of long and maybe boring. I don't know why I should think it was boring when the reviews were so good that apparently I wanted to get it. But I thought, not boring, but maybe slow. I thought maybe the movie is going to be like slow for most of it and maybe just a little bit here and there. But really, the it really kept me going. And then, you know, what they say, like the third act, basically, when she has this, like, after the mother's dead, you know, it's different, but, but that's a good thing, that's what makes movies different, I guess, makes you think about things differently in different ways, but, I hope that I don't ever get captured by some psycho blind person, <laughs> I mean, might be able to fight back a little bit more than she did, I don't know, but, ugh. Anyway, so that's that, Blind Beast. Thanks for watching, guys. This is number 11, so we'll see what's next. Peace out.